what the homosexual uh, squatter must do. The homosexual squatter must do the following. So get and keep a job. Keep that job for more than a year. Get and keep a place. Pay for that place on their own and without help and with, uh, with their own money he or she gets from working on a job legally. Stay in that place for a minimum of a year and then recess. Reassess. What I remember my stepfather uh, saying, and this was bef uh, this was after I made many of my bad decisions, right, concerning homosexual uh, uh, men, was that uh, he made this comment, um, and I didn't get the the understanding of it until much later. What he said was, when you're dating with someone, seeing someone, pay attention again. Pay attention to what they're not saying. Okay, that's one. And then he said, um, him, um, does he have a job? Okay. And then ask him how long he's been on a job. Okay. Then ask him how, does he have a place? All right. So then how long has he been in that place? Okay. So then if he has been in that place for a long time, does he have any furniture? All right. And then now you can look at the situation uh, for what he is. He's a grown up. He understands that he's a grown up. He got a job. He got a place. Uh, there is intent to be stable because he got furniture. And so now he can date responsibly. OK. But if you have someone depending upon a situation, if you have a male who is living with their parents, it may be a situation where the parents are sick or elderly or something like that, that may be different, okay? If the male is contributing to the house because there isn't much income coming into the house because the parents are retired, that's a little different. Yeah, you may have to, have to, um, you know, kind of look at that situation, all right? Uh, and just assess it for what it is, okay? But if he's 40 years old and those issues are not present, meaning that the parents are well able they got money of their own they got all of uh, their house is paid for and he's just living there and barely paying any, any money he don't know how to take care of himself in, in other words he can't wean he doesn't know how to wean himself from the primary caregiving of that house the parents their money their uh anything that they're offering him he doesn't know how to do that okay if he doesn't know how to do that he can't be a husband to anybody let alone a boyfriend, he can't he can't function apart from um, he can't function apart from the breast. He's still weaning from his mother's breast. He still wants his father's a uh, hug around him, right? Um, and that's a problem because when you come together as two adults who want to get married, both of you need to keep a job. I don't agree uh, today, in today's climate, um, financial climate, social climate, political climate, that people that people in a marriage or at least one person should not have a job. If there's a situation where they just had a baby and uh, the mother needs to be at home, right, for five years, that's different, Okay. But eventually you need to get a job because if you put all of the responsibility, uh, lay all of the responsibility and burden on the man, on the husband to do everything in this climate today, what if he gets sick? What if he has a stroke? What if he um, uh, has a heart attack? What if he decides to leave you? He could decide to leave you. That could happen. And so I don't think anybody should be without a job. Even a stay-at-home mom, um, mother, or father should have at least a job with somewhere for two days because it gives you some change in your pocket. It gives you some income. And so if a person decided to leave you, you could tell that job, hey, I'm available for full-time or more hours. Can you give me more hours? Then it's easier to transition into that situation. But if you don't have anything at all, that's going to prove kind of detrimental to you because you are relying too much on uh, one person when you are still an adult.
See, I don't base everything simply on, okay, he needs to make X amount of money. He needs to do this. He needs to do that. I don't do it like that. What I do is, do you make enough money to take care of yourself as an adult? If $25,000 is the money that you have from earning on a job, but you still manage to keep an apartment, pay your car note, pay um, food, electric, phone, anything like that, and you still can get that done, okay, that's an adult. It's not that the person needs to make $100,000 or $200,000 or $300,000 or be a millionaire. Because for one, if, if, if you're asking someone to make that, the first question that you need to ask is, do you make that? You can't ask anything of someone else that you're not doing yourself. And so that's why I have a problem with this sort of new age trend where people want to say, especially women want to say, well, he needs to do this. He needs to do that. He needs to have this. He needs to do this or whatever. Okay, but do you have it? And a lot, and some of these women, they do have their own places and they do make um, uh, fair enough money. I mean, if you're a person who works in corporate America and you're making $250,000 a year, I do believe you need someone who works at that level, who understands that level. If you got a person who's making $25,000 a, a year, they don't really understand the difference between, in terms of work ethic, 25 and 250. I know that may sound harsh, but that's a different type of work ethic. It makes sense to me. I teach college. So it makes sense to me really to get with the person who understands uh, teaching. I, uh, uh, or because uh, teaching is, is more about uh, self-study, self-reliance, um, um, initiation. It's almost like you're running yourself as a business. You're getting a paycheck, but you have to um, um, create the situations yourself. Okay, if a person is only used to clocking in and clocking out on the job, clocking in work and clock on the job, um, uh, but you have to, in your field, initiate a lot of the ideals and and develop those ideals, and then distribute um, um, uh, assignments of that uh, of those ideals, and delegate authority, and supervise people, manage budgets, things like that. There's so much more that you have to do at your two hundred and fifty thousand dollar level than at the twenty five thousand dollar level. And there may be a clash between you two because when you bring your work home, sometimes it's just unavoidable. You are a salaried person, whereas he may be an hourly person. And so a lot of people don't understand uh, when you are choosing careers and when you're marrying someone who has a career. Um, I was thinking about the Kevin Costner situation, and he's going through a divorce with his wife, and she was all mad that he was spending too much time acting and things like that. Kevin Costner has had major, 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 major roles. He's Kevin Costner. But this... Um, uh, role that he's had in, in a series, the name of the series just has um, eluded me. Uh, that's one of those, strangely enough, it's kind of like a breakout role that a non-celebrity person who just comes on the Hollywood, Hollywood scene will get. Because some, it's funny how you get more recognition and breakout and more opportunities in your later years than you do in your former years, your previous years. So she's complaining about him having to work and things like that. Okay, well, you married Carrie, uh, you married Kevin Costner. You married the celebrity, the, the A-list celebrity Kevin Costner. What did you think? What did you think was going to happen when you did that? And so that's why I say um, it's not always smart to marry someone when you are already uh, a, a high-performing person in a field where the other person is not necessarily high performing in their field. There's performance, but not high performing where uh, the consequences are higher. Uh, if that person does not meet state of uh, uh, quotas and things like that, right? So I don't have a, I necessarily don't necessarily, I don't necessarily have a problem with someone who's making 25,000. What I look at is can you take care of yourself? Can you, as a grown individual, 
And if you're making 25, 30, 40,000, I'm not going to have a, necessarily a problem with you, but also don't have a problem with me because I'm making what I'm making, right? And because what I do has a has a bit of a high performance um, quality to it. And so when you're thinking about the homosexual squatter, they have to be able to get and keep a job, keep that job for more than a year, not get on the job and hop from job to job, job hopping. Like I saw a lot of, of situations in a, shel um, in a shelter, shelter hoppers. When one shelter ended their term, they just go to the next shelter. That shelter could last about three months or something like that. They stay there for three months and they come back to the previous shelter. They never plan for the transition out of the shelter. It's like a just wheel. They're just roaming around on a uh, running around on a hamster's wheel, and they're every they're everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So they need to keep that job for more than a year. They need to keep get and keep a place. Whatever place can um, work for you. When I was coming out of the shelter and I was still going through my transition, uh, I got a motel. I got the extended stay motel. I stayed in there um, 2013 to about 2022. 2022. That's what I could afford. The money that I was making as an adjunct uh, adjunct professor. That's all I could uh, I could afford. I didn't have the money to make the uh, three times rent uh, to meet that qualification. I didn't have that. So I did with what I did and I planned. I wrote the books. I create the video lessons. I had a vision, um, a vision for myself uh, and I stayed consistent on that job. I didn't quit that job uh, out of being upset or anything like that. I went on ahead and resigned back in 2021, July, because of the pandemic, because I couldn't get classes. And I thought, well, maybe I can go to go back to San Diego because it looked like I could get a job there. And then something started to happen in San Diego because of the pandemic, the COVID crisis. But uh, but but I was called back fall 2022 for a temporary full time job, which made it a possible made it possible for me to then make the three uh, meet the three times rent requirement and a deposit. Right. Because everybody is asking for a deposit today. Uh, 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 one month's rent deposit and uh, make that and then uh, move into an apartment, which I've been in since November 2022. Okay, so then um, uh, it took it took some time. It took some time. But wherever you are, get somewhere and get stable is it, it goes back to what our uh, aunts and big mamas used to say, get somewhere, sit down. You keep jumping from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing, and you're not accomplishing anything. So if they can get and keep a job, keep that job for more than a year, get and keep a place of their own, not moving in with somebody else, and not moving in with a woman, right, in this case, or a woman moving in with a man. If you're moving in with a roommate situation, you're both on the lease. So that means you're not a homosexual squatter and you're not homeless because you both are on the lease. But if you're moving in someone and being a roommate, but your name is not on the lease, you're still homeless. Uh, get and keep a place. Pay for that place on their own and without help and with and with their own money they get from working on a job. And then stay in that place for a minimum of a year and then reassess. And so if you look at it like this, any job that you get, you need to stay on it for at least two years. It gives you record record of working and then it gives you a recommendation letter if you have to get it and then you reassess in at the end of that second year and say okay i know i can do another uh two to three years so that gives you five years of employment now reassess okay if you give me if you stay on the job for two years that means you can pay for your place that gives you two years and then you reassess uh in the third year whether or not you want to stay in that place or whether or not you want to move on to another apartment okay then if you're going to do that, or if you're not going to do that, you keep the job for another three years that keeps you in a place for five years. Keeps you on a job for five years, keeps you in a place for five years. So that's these are the questions that you have to ask that are implicit in what the homosexual squatter must do, because otherwise you're just going to be taking care of a child, a grown child. And that's not fair. That's not fair. Like I said, there are exceptions to the rule. If a situation has happened where you lost your job, lost your place, even an eviction, uh, 
lost something due to um, a natural disaster, a flooding or something like that. Those are completely uh, different circumstances. Pandemic, right? Everyone is still recuperating and healing from the pandemic. And so you may have to exercise some patience with that person. But if you see a situation where the person would rather do one thing, do illegal behavior, uh, than do another, they don't want to change. 